Hi guys, so I wanted to do a video um, to open up discussion, I guess, in the comments section below between using a telescopic gauge and a dial bore gauge. And uh, I want to share my opinion on it. And then I also want to hear from you guys as to what you think. Um, I guess we'll start with the advantages of a dial bore gauge. The fact that once you've set it up, it's so quick, so accurate and easy to do. If you've got multiple cylinders, I think it's excellent because you can plonk it in, you can rock it back and forth and you can see the deflection on the needle and you can write it down. If you tried to do that with a telescopic gauge and you did three measurements at the top and three measurements at the bottom on say eight cylinders, you're gonna be there all day uh, and it is frustrating. However, I only work on single cylinders. So the advantage of a dial bore gauge in terms of setting up and that does take some time and there is a, a degree of um, accuracy that you need just to be able to set that dial bore gauge up. But the other thing is if you can't use a telescopic gauge accurately with inside the bore, and let's go back to my point where I said that these aren't inaccurate, it's the user that's the problem. Uh, if you can't use these inside the diameter of a bore, then how do you expect to find the measurements within say um, the diameter of a bearing pocket inside the engine or the small end of the conrod or the big end of the conrod or the diameter of the gudgeon pin and the, the diameter for the gudgeon pin in the piston, um, the diameter of the uh, valve guides, I mean, the, all those measurements that can't be measured with a dial bore gauge, um, then if you don't trust yourself using these in the bore, why are you trusting yourself using them in all the other parts of the engine that are just as critical? I guess that was my thought process and that's why I stuck with these, not only because they're more affordable, I mean, these are Mitutoyo and they still are quite expensive, but they are far more affordable than a dial bore gauge, is that uh, they cover a massive range. I mean, I've got everything from, what are these in here? Uh, eight to 50 millimeters. So what I thought I'd do is share how I use them and then hope that you will uh, write some comments in the section, comment section below and share your thoughts as well and how you use them and if you use them differently um, or if you think that I'm using them wrong. I'd be really interested to hear. So the first thing is I've already zeroed this gauge. It's fine, uh, the, the micrometer is fine. I'm not gonna do it again. It's just gonna waste your time. And the bearing, although uh, I've cleaned it, there is rust on it. It's not so bad on the internals here, um, but it is worn. It's come out of a chainsaw. It's probably about 30 years old. Um, so even though I don't think we're going to get, well, we shouldn't even get an accurate 20 millimeter diameter here because that no longer is 20. I can see that there's very fine scratches in there. Um, what we're looking for is being able to consistently go back and forth between the telescopic gauge and the micrometer each time and get an accurate reading. And this is how I do it. Uh, I've seen a lot of people online, a couple of the main things that I've tried, that I've seen, that I've found don't give accurate readings and yet people still do it. The first one is when they put the, uh, the telescopic gauge inside the bore, everything's clean here, um, and they'll rock back and forth, they'll tighten up and then they'll lose their original position here. You can see that it's moving around and then they'll get it roughly where they thought it was and they'll pull out. And technically you'd think that would be accurate because you would think that the micrometer has found the that right position. But in the real world of when you actually come back to measure it and then you compare it with uh, a slightly different method, which I think is better, um, it's nowhere near as accurate. It's not consistent at all. So that's the first thing. And the, the way to combat that I found is once you've pop this in and you found that center and you snug it up and you do uh, like that bit of a rotational movement so that you're counteracting the force of tightening the screw is actually to pull slightly back, just gently. You're not intending to close the anvils. That's too much pressure. You're just putting a bit of firmness on the anvils um, either side of the internal diameter you're measuring so that you then don't drop down and then lose that position where you were. So go in. Go back and forth a few times. We'll then tighten and pull back just slightly. You want it nice and firm. And now release completely. Pull up and out. And that point of releasing um, is that you don't accidentally twist a bit harder with one and twist a bit harder with the other. Once you've twisted, I then find if I just gently release pressure on both while still holding it, obviously then it stays nice and firm. So what we'll do to make sure we're not cheating is I've got a little piece of paper here that I used to clean the anvils on the micrometer originally, and uh, we'll see, and I'll show you my method. So I guess I've seen people, this is the other thing I wanted to discuss, I've seen people will simply put their telescopic gauge in the micrometer, they'll tighten it up, click, 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 and they'll call that an accurate reading. And again, I found that not to be the case 
Because even though these are both flat and these are both domed and it should find that uh, measurement, if you're slightly uh, off on that angle, the distance that the anvils have to close is going to be smaller. So the other option is I've seen people will uh, gently bring the spindle in until they can just about feel the two contacts here by sweeping, which I think is, is, is excellent. That's really, really good. So long as when you zero the micrometer at the beginning, you put the same amount of pressure on the spindle as you will the contact pressure between the uh, stem here, whatever you want to call it, and the anvil of the micrometer. If you actually uh, close this and then you click it, say three clicks on the ratchet, that's going to be more pressure. And then when you come back and you're only just slightly brushing it, you're no longer going to be accurate and you're no longer going to be using this zeroed uh, micrometer um, in the most accurate way possible. So I actually do um, a combination of both. I'll put this in and I'll gently uh, come up to the point where I start to feel that it, it just contacts and that's going to be kind of like my starting point. I'll then come back out and then I'll gently sweep across the uh, across the diameter of the anvils of the micrometer until I just start to feel contact. And the point at which I just feel contact, the highest point, then I'll snug that up with a couple of clicks or three clicks, and that will be my reading. So, and this is real time, I'm not gonna edit anything here. That's it. One, two, three. So we are 20.004 millimeters. It's pretty much what I would have expected. It's slightly worn um, and uh, there was no way that, that was gonna be uh, bang on 20. But the key here really, let's bring that back out. The key here really is, can we get that reading again? Can we transfer this diameter, which we know we did very well, back onto this micrometer accurately? So. We'll cover that up. We'll go back in. I'll bring the anvils together to touch the anvils of the, uh, or the stems of whatever you want to call it, of the telescopic gauge. I'll then come back out. I'll then start sweeping until I find that high point is just contact, just brushing. say about mm, there, one, two, three, and we're 20.003. So we are one micron difference. And that's incredibly accurate. That's way more than we would ever need. We'll do it one more time. It's always good to do these things in threes. So we'll bring together we'll come out, we'll start sweeping until I find I just make contact against the anvil. And then as soon as that contact occurs, I'm going to then there, one, two, three, back to 20.004. So uh, I guess the average the, the, between the two uh, is what 0.3 Point, I guess four. I can see the advantage with a, a dial bore gauge. You put it in, you rock it back and forth, and you can physically see the deflection of the needle, and that's excellent across the board. But uh, again, if you're just working on a single cylinder, and you've only got to do that a few times at the top, a few times at the bottom, take an average, and in that case, we'd be pretty much bang on. Um, yeah. It, it, it seems like a no-brainer to me. And then if you've learned how to use this, you can then use that across all different parts of the engine um, with the single set of gauges. So yeah, there we go. Actually, I'll tell you what, let's go back now and we'll do another reading and we'll see if we're still bang on with that 20.004. So make sure we're clean. Rock back and forth. Tighten up, counter pressure. Sorry, I moved it ever so slightly. 
bit low. I'm trying to keep as close as I can as I was before. Clean these up. Bring these back in. No cheating. And then touch, come back out, gentle sweeping until I find that high point. One, two, three, 20.004. So you, you can't ask for more than that. Um, you, you really can't. The accuracy is, is solely down to the user. Um, so I think, it's, I think it's wrong and I think it's, well, it's factually incorrect to say that these aren't accurate. They are incredibly accurate. Uh, out of three readings I took, we were basically bang on every single time. And then I went back, we redid it again, and we're bang on again. Um, so yeah, share your thoughts below. Let me know how you use uh, telescopic gauges. Um, and I'll be really interested to, to know. So hope you enjoyed it. That was uh, something I've wanted to do for a little while. Um, kind of, uh, I had a little bit of a bee in my bonnet when people say they aren't accurate. Um, these are accurate, it's the user that's not. Um, and uh, I think if you take the time and you follow, that's what I found to work for me. But if you follow uh, a set set of a set process um, and you avoid human error as much as physically possible, they are unquestionably beautifully accurate.